Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. The South African government plans to deploy 25,000 troops after days of widespread looting and violence. Some 72 people have died and over 1,700 have been arrested since the jailing of the former President Jacob Zuma sparked the country's worst unrest in years. Hundreds of shops and businesses have been looted and the government says it is acting to prevent food shortages. Citizens are arming themselves and forming vigilante groups to protect their property from the rampage. Some 208 incidents of looting and vandalism were recorded on Wednesday as the number of troops deployed doubled to 5,000. Growing numbers of troops are reported to be mobilizing across Ethiopia to join the fight against Tigrayan rebels in the north of the country. Gunter. This could signal that the conflict might be taking a new shape with the involvement of forces from other regions. Local media say forces are rallying from the Oromia, Sidama and Southern nations. It comes amid calls by Prime Minister Abe Ahmed for the public to show support for the army and the government. The Afghan government says the Taliban have proposed a three-month ceasefire in Afghanistan in return for the release of 7,000 captured fighters. Clashes between the government and the Taliban have intensified since U.S. troops began to withdraw from the country. The Taliban recently claimed their fighters had retaken 85 percent of territory in the country. An Afghan government negotiator described the proposal as a big demand. The government has so far not said how it will react. Haitian police say they are in hot pursuit of the masterminds in connection with the assassination of President Jovenel Moise. Police said at a news conference that 24 police officers have been subjected to precautionary measures and four were in isolation as part of the investigation. National Police Chief Leon Charles identified former Haitian Senator John Joel Joseph as a key player in the plot and pointed a finger at a company as being responsible for the operation's funding. Cuba has temporarily lifted import duties on food, medicine and other essentials following recent unrest. As of next Monday, there will be no limit on such goods brought in by travellers until the end of the year. Hello, Thousands of people took to the streets on Sunday in protests over food and medicine shortages, price increases and the government's handling of COVID-19. Dozens have been arrested nationwide since the unrest began. Authorities confirmed that one man has died. People cried out, down with President Diaz-Canel, down with communism. Freedom for the people of Cuba. We want medicine. We want food. That is what the people cried out. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro may need emergency surgery after suffering persistent hiccups for 10 days. He is being transferred to a hospital in Sao Paulo to undergo tests for an obstructed intestine. In a tweet, Mr. Bolsonaro said he would be back soon, God willing. There have been concerns about the far-right leader's health since he was stabbed in the intestine while campaigning in 2018. Mr. Bolsonaro was seriously wounded in the attack and lost 40% of his blood. And finally, taking advantage of record warm temperatures and the midnight sun, people in Finland have enjoyed a midnight swim in downtown Helsinki on Wednesday night. According to the local weather forecaster, the night between Wednesday and Thursday was the hottest since records began, reaching a nighttime temperature of over 24 degrees. Finland is currently experiencing a heat wave, with June being the warmest month in recorded history. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.